what's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how to optimize Banish's Ghost of New Eden for the best performance possible. We're going to get straight into the in-game options, so if you'd like to find out more about optimizing your system, be it Windows 10, 11, or something specific like an NVIDIA graphics card, you'll find guides with them in the description down below. Without further ado, let's begin. I'll enable an FPS overlay, and without getting too far into the story, let's go ahead and find out what kind of performance we get with each of the individual options to find out what's the most impactful in the game. Starting off the optimization, head across to the options menu, followed by video, and in here, we'll start with the screen section at the very top. The first is pretty obvious, display mode should be full screen for the best possible performance, but borderless full screen works too. On most PCs, you won't really see a difference. Make sure your screen resolution matches your display, or at least is compatible. Maximum refresh rate should be unlimited, and gamma is your preference. V-Sync should be turned off, unless you're getting screen tearing, and the aliasing should be set to TAA and resolution scaling to 100 if you'd like to play at native resolution. This means no upscaling, no anything fancy. I'm setting it a solid, let's see, 78 FPS. If we instead change this to the right to FSR2 on quality and apply, you'll see we jump to 83-ish with practically no visual quality loss. In fact, shimmering by the gate has actually seemed to improve. Then across to NVIDIA DLSS, also quality, you should notice very similar performance and very similar visual fidelity. We're getting 85, 86-ish FPS here as well. Obviously, you won't be able to use DLSS on anything but NVIDIA graphics cards, past I think it's the 2000 series, whereas you can use FSR anywhere, even on NVIDIA hardware. On top of this, on newer hardwares, you'll also see DLSS FG. This is frame generation, and if you have an RTX 40 series or above, you should turn this on for much better performance. But do note, you should optimize your game settings first and then come back to enable this, as it'll give you better feeling gameplay, even if your number of FPS is technically higher, input latency and things like that can still be improved. So for now, we'll keep upscaling or upsampling all the way down to TAA, so nothing fancy is being done. Oh, and not to mention, if you find that it's a bit blurry for you, both FSR and DLSS have a sharpness option for you to mess around with. Finally, the last NVIDIA-specific option is Reflex Low Latency, and while you can enable this, you won't really see too much of a difference on most setups. This more has to do with input latency, so following the standard rules of you should turn it on if you're GPU limited or boost if your CPU limited, where your CPU is holding back your graphics card. Anyways, for now, we'll be changing it back to TAA just to see what all of the options actually give us performance-wise. Scrolling down, graphics. Motion blur, I'd recommend you turn off if you struggle with motion sickness or just don't like it. This shouldn't have too much of an effect on quality or FPS, but you may notice that if you're getting a bit of stuttering, it can help hide it. Then from 77 FPS, the graphics quality preset adjusts all of the options below this point, other than HDD compatibility mode. We'll get there eventually. For now, very high was 177. We'll crank it down to just high. And for this, we'll need to restart our game to get true numbers. But if you were to quit out of this, you'll notice it'll only really improve slightly, though stability may be majorly impacted when you restart your game after changing graphics options. From 88 to 105, 107, moving from high to just medium, there's a huge boost. And finally, medium to low, 110. Not such a huge jump. For the most part, you'll be changing your graphics quality here to closely match whatever kind of system you have and either moving up or moving down. We'll start on the lowest options and find out which ones are the heaviest hitters moving up. So we're looking for FPS drops. Though, first of all, texture quality shouldn't have any impact on performance. It completely depends on how much VRAM your system has. It completely depends on how much VRAM your graphics card has. I'm setting at 110 with it on low. And because I have tons of VRAM, being I think it's 12 gigs, I can push it all the way up to very high and there should be practically no FPS difference and there's really not. Why is this? Well, loading textures and keeping them in memory isn't going to be an issue unless you're trying to load more than you have space available. Quality improves drastically, of textures of course, the higher this option is, but if you push it too high, you'll be swapping textures in and out, causing major stuttering and lag. If you have a graphics card with 2-4 to four gigabytes of VRAM, set it to low, around 5-6, to six, medium, around 8, high, and anything above that, very high should be very good. Good. The only other low hitting option should probably be post processing quality, for which there's not too much going on right now. Moving from 111 from low to very high post processing, the only thing that changes is maybe how the screen looks a little bit, but there's practically 
no difference in performance. Obviously, this may be different in combat scenarios and things like that, but for the most part, it seems pretty smooth throughout general gameplay and combat as well. So these two options probably have the least impact on performance. Anti-aliasing usually has a large impact on performance, but to be honest, pushing it from low to very high, there's practically no difference. As long as you're not using upsampling like DLSS or FSR, you can choose to use anti-aliasing, as using FSR or DLSS have these anti-aliasing qualities built in anyways. So choosing anything but TAA disables anti-aliasing and we don't need to worry about it. Anti-aliasing mostly smooths the edges around sharp corners corners and different objects, etc. You may like how it looks, you may not, but for the most part, the game definitely isn't blurry by any means, which is great. Everything's super crisp and clean. Anti-aliasing doesn't seem to have a huge negative impact on how the game looks on the surface. From 110, we're getting into options that actually really mean something with performance. View distance quality changes how far high quality models are loaded. And of course, in certain areas, this will be more impactful than others. Here, there's only maybe a three to four FPS drop by raising this as there's only a handful of objects being loaded. In busy large buildings and things like that, this number may be drastically different, but here at least there's not too many objects being loaded, so we're only losing a handful of FPS loading higher quality models at a much further distance rather than a closer distance. For the most part, you could probably leave this on medium, if not high, if you're happy to lose a few FPS, just to keep the game looking even better with less pop-in, etc. Not that I've noticed much pop-in anyways. From 110 FPS, we'll raise foliage quality and this should have a huge impact in pretty much all scenes as there's tons of foliage everywhere. Here we lose maybe 15-ish FPS, so it's definitely one of the heaviest hitters as this game is very foliage heavy. As for the difference between very high and low, there's not too much difference. If we have a look here and flip back to low, there's almost just as much grass. The trees look practically the same, but there's a huge FPS increase by dropping this from very high to low. So to be honest, you don't really need to raise this at all, except for maybe trees in the distance. Let's see if that one by the church improves. And yeah, it does at very high. It's very easy to see that it's a tree. High still looks just as good. Medium from 103 to 110, it looks even better. Then low, it just seems to fall apart. So the difference between medium and low is practically no FPS in this scene at least, but the quality difference is enough to say the lowest I'd push your foliage option is medium. Then from 110, effects quality. This should also be mainly centered around combat and things like that happening. Here, they shouldn't be too much and that's reflected in losing only two to three FPS. For the most part, fire, particle effects, and things like that around ghosts, etc., should have a much bigger impact on performance. So you'll really need to see how your system does in combat and things like that to find out what you can have this option set to. For the most part, medium, if not higher, should be what you choose here for better looking combat and things like that, as it's not a Call of Duty type game. But if you're experiencing huge frame stuttering, hitching, and things like that, this is one of the options you should come back and lower. Then shadow quality should have a huge impact on performance as everything casts shadows and here it's pretty much reflected. We lose once again around 15 FPS. Even though we don't see too many shadows changing between very high and low, this is an option you may want to raise. But personally, there's not too much going on. I wouldn't mind playing on medium, if not high, but we seem to lose a bit of performance here. If you need extra performance and better looks, set it to medium, if not lower. But if you like how the game looks and are playing for more of a cinematic reason, have FPS to spare, this is one of the options I'd recommend you keep higher, just for better depth and things like that while you're playing the game, making it seem more real. And that's pretty much it. We've run through all of these options here. Once again, foliage has one of the biggest impacts, though the lowest I'd go is medium. Shadow quality, once again, a huge impact. Medium to low, there's not too much of a difference and that's somewhere where I'd place it. Effects quality depends on how your PC handles combat and things like that. View distance quality has a handful of impact, but if you can have it set higher, I would definitely recommend it just to keep popping in things lower. The rest of these options didn't have too much of an effect. Finally, HDD compatibility mode. This tells your game to load files differently from your drive where it's installed, just to make sure there's less hitching and stuttering and things like that. If you place this game on an SSD and it's faster than a hard drive, then I'd recommend leaving this off. Otherwise, if it's on a hard drive, set it to on for a more consistent gameplay experience. And that's really about it here. On the gameplay tab, there's not too much. The same goes for the audio tab, but what I would recommend is on the audio section, at the very bottom, you'll find night mode. You can enable this if you'd like dialogue to be more intelligible if that's something you're struggling with on your sound setup. Then speaker type, you can change between 
all of these options here, and you can see what happens on the far right. For most people, I recommend playing with headphones, as you'll likely be playing with headphones, for a more 3D immersive experience. The rest of the options here, including TV and soundbar, are just how the game sounds, so you can more easily understand different sounds, people speaking, etc. if you're playing on much smaller speakers. For the most people, headphones and night mode may be on if that's something that you need, is what you'll be playing with. Of course, you can adjust all the volumes individually, as you would anywhere else, but that's really all the customization we get. Oh, and something you may completely hate is when you open up your inventory and move your mouse around, there's this effect. If you dislike how this happens and might even make you a bit sick, then head into Options, followed by Language and Accessibility, and in here you can turn off Parallax, which you may not have known what it is. When you turn it off and reopen your menu inventory, you'll see here, that whole effect is gone and it's very easy to jump around and do exactly what you need. It may be for you, it may not be for you, but that's something you may want to go into this game keeping in mind. But anyways, we've really run through everything you'll need to know here, so hopefully you found this video useful. Do leave a comment down below with what you thought, and let me know if there's anything else I should cover. Thank you all for watching, my name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!